Hi folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Today, if you clicked on this because you saw the picture and you wonder why I look scared, I'm going to show you why I look scared. When you drain the water, drain the water. Ha! Huh, there, I gave it away. When you drain the oil out of the, out of the gearbox on your outboard and water comes out, that should scare the crap out of you because chances are it's going to cost you a lot of money. But we're going we're gonna to go through and how to show you how to do it together. At least step one, take it apart. Now on this particular one I'm working off is off a 1966 Mercury 9.8. 9 .8. It's a 9.8. Uh, the motor runs good, should run good. It's got great compression. It has some bad wiring, has some other stuff, but the gearbox is noisy, so noisy. I'll play you some of the video of me spinning it, trying to work some oil down in it. When I drain the oil out of this, I got no oil, no oil. Nothing but water. So what does that tell you? Got to go in the gearbox. Seals are all shot. Got to replace all the seals. And because of the noise that was there, we got some bearing failure happening. We're going to freshen this thing up and make her like brandy new again. I'm going to show you how to get into one of these. Actually, I'm going to show you how I learned how to get into one of these. We'll do it together. You guys have seen this. You guys have pulled this off your boat or off your outboard possibly. And water pumps in this area. As you can see, the water pump's already been removed. Uh, but have you ever gone into this part of it? Have you ever taken all the gears and everything out of here and seen what's going on in there? I'm going to show you how I took mine apart, or this one I'm working on apart this evening. And I've never done it before in my life. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do to take it apart. Watch, and we'll both learn together. It's time to pull the old gearbox apart. This is the one that's got. Doesn't sound real good, does it, folks? So we're going to pull it apart. Plus, I can't get it to do anything but be in forward gear. So we're going to pull the prop off, and then we'll see how to get the rest of it apart. Alright, we got the plastic, feels like plastic anyway, lock nut plus a spacer washer behind it pulled out. Now we got to pull out the, let me bring you around here and show you what we got. Now we got to pull out this one. And these are left hand threads so you turn clockwise to back this out. At least that's what it took to get this out. What I need to attempt to do is I need to pull this uh, seal housing or bearing retainer or gear lower gear retainer gearbox retainer uh, piece out that should hold the I believe it is I can't remember it's a Ford or reverse gear but anyway it will pull this out with the shaft but I don't have a puller and I don't know how this is normally supposed to come out but I have a feeling if I pull on this I can get it to come out but I'm going to learn with you guys and we're going to learn this together but I have an idea that I think is going to work. So I want to share it with you. It's a quick, simple tool to make this happen and hopefully not break anything. So let's get after doing that. So in order to pull that little gear piece out or whatever you want to call that piece, I'm not sure the official name, we're going to create a tool. We're going to use a three inch quarter inch bolt. This is a grade five going by the marks on the head, quarter 20, three inch long bolt. We're going to then Remove the head. I'm cutting the head right off of it, so we got a straight bolt. And through the miracle of cameras, I'm gonna do this. Dun, dun, dun. Bend it over at a 90 degree angle. Now this bolt, you can bend it hot. I got away with bending it cold without cracking, so that's what I'm gonna do two more times. I currently have this in my vise sticking out. According to my calipers here, about 7 sixteenths of an inch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this over to a 90 degree ander, hammer, 90 degree hammer, 90 degree angle with my hammer. Whoops, I hit it down too far. Let's see if this works. We'll give you a new number to work with here. It's about uh, 567, 9 16ths, it's 562. Yeah, we'll go 9 16 Good and tight. 
We're gonna hit with a, we're gonna start off with a blow this way just to get the bend started. And then flatten her on down. There we go. One done. Now I have three of these. And you say, Michael, why you got three? Well, I got three because I got three slots. And I wanna pull them, I wanna hook these in here and I'll show you how I'm gonna hook them in. And I still don't know if this is gonna work or not. It's gonna be an epic win or an epic fail. So as you can see, I wanna get these in here and hook them behind like that to be able to pull on this piece and pull it out evenly. That's the game plan. So now you ask yourself, Michael, what do you gotta do next? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna go ahead. I gotta establish some measurements here. So I'm gonna put this thing back in the vise. And while I'm doing that, we're just gonna speed up. You can watch me. Now we gotta put a little bit of pen to paper and see if we can come up with uh, the circle diameter, roughly, of where that is to the center of that arc right in here. So, and I'll show you why I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna drill a three hole pattern in a piece of wood that I can put these bolts through so I can put them in there and rotate it and pull and they'll all hit all three of these at the same time. That's the easy part. So now, right now we've got a diameter. Let's just call this ID right here, somewhere around two inch 250. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure right to here And we got about 273. So we got 2.250. And to get to the center of, or the edge of that slot, we've got to take half of that, which is 1.125. That'll bring us to the center here, 1.125 to the edge of here, if you follow me, minus what I just measured, minus 0 0.275. So 1.125. 1.125 minus 0.275 comes out to 950 thousandths. So from here to the edge is 950 thousandths. Now I want to subtract half of this slot to get me to the center of that slot. That'll be from here. Then that will be from here to the center of the slot. So we're at 950. And I doubt I can get it. Oh, I can. Cool. The slot is 356 wide. So I want to take half of 356. So 356 divided by two is 176. So now we're going to take 950.950 minus 176, which gives us a four and a five and an eight and a eight minus a 784. So somewhere around 0.784 from the center of the shaft, so just to a quick eyeball here, 0.784. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? 0.784. So somewhere around there to the center of that slot, that looks pretty, I'm just eyeballing that, that looks pretty darn good. I like that. So, what I got to do on this block now, and this block's probably too small or maybe a bit just right, or... Now what you can see here is I've created essentially a three-jaw puller with the nuts I can tighten independently. Now let's see if I can get it to fit in here and work. I'm gonna try to, what I wanna do is get it slid over the shaft here and into the slots. Well, here goes nothing. Look at that. Look at that. That just. That slid right out. That worked like a champ. <laughs> now that wasn't crazy tight, but I couldn't get a hold of it with anything else. And uh, that worked really nice. The handy dandy. Now that we got that out, we can go after the rest of it. 
Now that we've got that out, we'll go ahead and dump the remainder of the oil out. All right, I'm trying to get you guys down in here so you can see this. Right in here, this isn't great, but this will work. Uh, right there, you can see this little tab right there that's on this bolt. That's to keep that from coming unscrewed. We need to flatten that out this direction, and then we can take that nut out, which will allow us to lift the shaft out of this gear, which is your drive shaft, and back that nut off. I'll take that nut out, back the shaft out, and get this gear out. Then we can take this gear out. So we're gonna do that. So that's what I'll be doing while you're watching this. Show you what kind of bolt was in there. Come on, focus you thing. There you go. Just a little washer with a lock tab and a bolt. That head was an eyeball size, so I'm gonna measure that. That was a 3 8 head. 3 8 was what I used. It just felt like it didn't fit real good, but 3 8 is what it took. So we got that out. Now to extract the drive shaft. I wanted to show you guys these, this. This is the shift shaft I pulled out. And I wanted you to see the seal up around this top edge that somebody installed. Let's see if I can get to focus on this. But look when I spin that around, you see that little wobble that's going on there? They didn't put that seal in there square. How do you do that? How do you get away with that? Not sure that was the issue, but I do know I do now see why the uh, shifter wouldn't shift out of drive because the shifter paw that's down in here, the shifter paw that's down in here uh, was disengaged. And once it gets disengaged, if you pull it out and don't and and move this around much, it falls out and then it, then you're stuck in first in forward gear. That's it. But I hear the hear I'm spinning that. That's our noisy bearing that I'm hearing. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna pull that out. Let me get you down in here so you can see what's left in here. Yeah, that's all that's left in here is that gear. I gotta pull it out. It's riding in a bearing that's pushed into this housing, but you can hear it. Hear how that bearing sounds? Compared to, hear anything there? Nothing. So that bearing is the one that's making all the noise. So I'm guessing the water that got down in there ruined that bearing, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the bearings because they're all been subject to the same exposure. So we'll, we'll examine them all and, and make some decisions. Now, before you guys go and yell at, yell at me, I'm gonna try something here. This. This is aluminum, bearings and stuff in there are hard, heat treated steel. When you warm this up, this will warm up faster than the steel. The coefficient for expansion of aluminum is much greater than that of steel, which is the bearing, what the bearing made out of. I am thinking I could take my little, my little propane here and warm this up and then give the housing some little shock taps like that, which don't even hurt anything and see if I can make that bearing just fall out into my hand. So let's give that a try. The nice thing is aluminum is a great conductor of heat. A great conductor, period. So we're just gonna warm this up. And this will or won't work. Oh, there it goes. Fell out right in my hand. Just that easy. It scared me, actually. <laughs> oh, didn't take much at all. And look at that. Came right out. This isn't even hot. That's all it took. And you got to watch. There's a little shim came out with it. That apparently goes right behind it there. Don't want to mess that up, don't. And we want to remember where that's at. Here's a little shifter paw that came out that's out of place. That fell out of place. I'm gonna look at a new one online to see if it has that kind of groove wore into it. That seems like a lot of groove. But maybe that's the way they are. I'll have to check it out. 
Wow, that was actually really simple. That's the first time, I'll be honest with you folks, first time I've ever taken a gearbox apart. Uh, never have done it in my life on a, on an outboard. Let's look inside there and see what's left in there. I don't think there's anything. That's as empty as it gets. Yeah, I can see how that shifter paw could just fall right out of place if you play around with it too much. I almost had that happen on another outboard I was working on when I was changing the shaft seal. Holy mackinoli. Okay. Well, that's good news. Now I can now I know what all the parts I need to order for this thing to make it right. Well, folks, I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Check out part two when I get it done. Part one's going to be out before I actually get part two done. And we're going to show you how I put it back together and how it sounds after I put it back together. You already see, you'll see, you've already seen in this video how noisy that gearbox was. It's like there's no amount of oil is going to cure a bad bearing. We got bad bearings. The reason we got bad bearings, we had bad seals. The reason we had bad seals is it wasn't probably maintenance properly over the long haul and seals just wear out. That's all there is to it. Uh, but you can prevent the damage that happened by checking your gear oil regularly. And, and quite honestly, you don't have to check it every time you go boating, obviously. But I use AMS oil, gear oil, and AMS oil gear oil says right on the bottle, up to 10% dilution with water, and the AMS oil will maintain its lubricity. I'm not sponsored by AMS oil, but how can you, how can you ignore that on that type of gear oil? Why wouldn't you want to protect yourself? As soon as you see the, the oil go milky, you might still have good protected gears. You just have bad seals. Well, just replacing the seals is a lot cheaper than buying gears and bearings. Make sense? So take that as you take that advice however you want to. Uh, do with it what you will. But that's what I do for my outboards and my uh, inboard outboard uh, stern drive units and whatnot to protect them. It's a they are heck of, their boats are expensive to start with. Let's not make them more expensive, make this hobby more expensive than it already is. So maintain, maintain, maintain. Service, service, service. My stuff might not look the prettiest on the outside, but I guarantee you what's inside has been serviced and taken care of and maintenance like it should. And that's what I also do as I'm working on some of these motors, as you've seen some of my other videos. I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing all the time. I'll admit that. I am no expert. I am a pro. I am a pro. Might even say super pro tinkerer. I will tinker with anything. I am not a scared. I'm not scared to take something apart and examine it and put it back together. A man put it together or a woman put it together. A man or a woman should be able to take it apart and put it back together. That's my philosophy. There is no rocket science here. It's just some engineering and a little bit of how to. So. I hope you enjoyed the video. Get out there and do something fun, folks. I learned something new today. We made a little specialty tool today. That's always fun. I'll use that again. I'll guarantee you I'll use that again in my future. Uh, I've got other little outboards that I'm working on. I will be probably pulling that. And now that I know how to get it out, I won't be afraid of it. And, that, and you can do the same now. So get out there and do something fun. Enjoy life. Don't let fear rule your life. Haters going to hate. Lovers are going to love. Pick who you're going to be. Enjoyers are going to enjoy. <laughs> Michael out.